Iron Meat is one game I simply could not put down, and actually 100%ed it, getting all the achievements as well as beating the game on the hardest difficulty. It had everything I could want from a retro 16-bit throwback title. It has the run and gun action one would expect from Contra, with the brutality from an overly violent, bloody horror game. I mean, throughout your playthrough, you're going to witness your character getting chopped in half from mutated teeth, get crushed by massive boulders, sliced and diced by lasers, and even smashed by a giant grotesque monster. Fatality. Basically, imagine Contra 3 Alien Wars and Splatterhouse performing the fusion technique and you would get Iron Meat. <laughs> the game kicks off with Yuri Markov studying an organism simply called the Meat on a military moon base. And as one could imagine, just like so many other stories involving a scientist studying a dangerous biohazard organism, the creature escapes and starts to run amok, killing and corrupting everything in his path. It even turns poor Yuri into a monster himself that looks like it came right out of John Carpenter's The Thing. However, unlike so many other stories with this generic setup, the meat not only causes an outbreak in the lab, it escapes to what appears to be the Stargate, and begins its invasion on the entire world. In the first 30 seconds of this game, we see bodies being gibbed and turned into a bloody mist, awesome explosions, and just really cool monster designs. This sets the atmosphere for the entire game. The only thing that would make this better is if the game had an awesome OST, and luckily for us, it does. Actually, scratch that. Iron Meat offers not only a heavy metal type of soundtrack, but also a retro style soundtrack. And the best part is, you can select which one you want for your playthrough. In fact, having your choice between two awesome soundtracks is not the only customization Iron Meat has to offer. We have the ability to slap on a shader, giving the game more of a Super Nintendo retro vibe, as well as a wide selection of characters. You could even mix and match the different skins and pick exactly what you want to play as. Plus, there is a difficulty selection, easy, normal, and hard. So if you're new to the genre, there's no shame, you could play on easy, because it makes the game pretty damn easy. In fact, it kind of turns into a snooze fest. You start with 30 lives as if you just use the Konami code, have less enemies on screen, and kill things significantly faster. Instead of being called Iron Meat, they should call this mode Tinfoil Tofu. If you select easy difficulty, you're kind of a noob. In fact, even the boss fights are a complete joke that offer no real challenge. Okay, all joking aside, easy mode really does have you start with 30 lives and there are less enemies on screen, but you can still die because it is still a one hit kill experience. There's really no shame in playing the game on this difficulty, in fact I'll admit it, I will admit it. My through, first playthrough I did play the game on easy. I just wanted more of a layback experience and truly be able to intake all the levels and enjoy the amazing pixel art. That being said, hard mode is really hard. There's a reason I played as a banana wearing a Freddy Cougar sweater. Simply because this type of intensity is the stuff of nightmares. Instead of starting with 30 lives, you only get 8. And you might be thinking, hey, 8 lives is quite a bit. Well, let me assure you, it's really not that many when you're playing this game. You constantly have enemies coming at you, have way more projectiles being shot your way. Enemies have much more health, and the boss fights turn into a bullet hell experience. Basically, good luck on this one, because it's surely going to kick your butt.
There are nine stages for you to play through, each with a different setting. Whether you're running through a military outpost in the forest, facing off against mutated vehicles with assault weapons and buzzsaws, until you finally make your way to the end of the stage and square up against a tank that has been corrupted by the meat, to fighting on a giant aircraft carrier as you climb up to the top, blowing up the engines and aircraft defense turrets along the way, until you climb to the very top and have an epic showdown with an attack helicopter. The game constantly mixes up the levels and boss fights, and it has incredible screen effects. Basically, this game takes what Alien Wars and Hardcore did back on the 16-bit era and cranks it up to 11. Now screen effects is not the only improvement when we compare Iron Meat to the Contra series. Weapon balancing feels so good in this game. And just like in Contra 3 Alien Wars, you're able to equip two weapons at a time. And if you pick up a gun that you already are carrying, it goes from a level 1 to being a level 2. And those level 2 weapons really pack a punch. There was never a moment of dread when I accidentally picked up a different weapon, much like you get when you pick up the flame gun in the OG Contra, or the daggers in the old school Castlevania, every weapon just felt good to use. In fact, the only time I regretted accidentally picking up a new item is when I had a level 2 weapon equipped and accidentally made it into a level 1. Another drastic improvement to the weapons in the game is the fact that they got rid of the weapon swap glitch that has played Contra titles since the Super Nintendo days. If you quickly swap between your weapons, it drastically slows down your fire rate, which unlike Contra, makes you an unstoppable killing machine when you abuse this mechanic. In fact, Contra Operation Gluga feels as if the game was balanced around abusing this weapon swap glitch, especially on the harder difficulties. One last thing I did enjoy when it comes to balancing is the fact that the hazards that kill you in the environment will also kill the enemies on screen. Spice coming out of the ceiling that would destroy you in one hit? Well, it kills the enemies as well. Turrets spamming bullets that are able to rip you to shreds? Guess what? They rip the monster to shreds as well. I know it's just a small detail, but I greatly appreciate when the environment rules apply the same to you as they do to the enemy AI. Now, while I highly recommend the game, I'm gonna admit there are a few drawbacks. First of all, when you die, you spawn in a different location, which doesn't sound like a big deal. But trust me, when you're playing on hard mode and there's so much chaos going on, it is a big deal. There were times I would die and spawn on one platform just a few feet back and immediately fall off the edge because I was still reacting to what had just killed me instead of just letting go of the controls for a second to readjust accordingly to the new spawn location, which goes against your natural instinct when playing a game where every second matters. Secondly, there's no online co-op. While the game does offer couch co-op, it would have been nice to be able to team up with my friends online. As I get older, it gets harder and harder to find time to have a gaming session with my friends online. It's basically impossible to have a gaming session in person. Lastly, let's talk about the power-ups. There are only two in the game, which is very limiting. Especially since the game is so creative in its level design, monster design, and boss fights. It's a shame to see that same creativity not delivered in the power-up system. That being said, this is the best run and gun title I have played in a long time. And it's a game that I absolutely recommend if you're a fan of the genre. But I would love to hear what you all think. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And if you made it this far and did enjoy the video, let me know by dropping a like. And if you are new, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification icon. As for me, I got a ton of work to do, so I'm going to get back to the grind and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.